Hey guys, it's me Simu Orohara and in this video we will talk about one of Kobo's latest interviews which was released on his website Club Outside and he spoke about matters related to the third part of the anime. There are some important points that Kobo mentioned and we need to discuss them. I would also like to touch on another topic that we fans call the Hell Arc, which we will discuss after covering the main points from the interview. And so this interview guys was in the form of a recorded radio show published on the site. Unlike previous times when Kobo either tweeted or answered some questions, this time it was a radio episode where Kobo spoke in person, along with the voice actors of Ichigo and Yuryu. And as usual in every interview about the anime, they began by talking about how the staff worked hard to bring the third part to the best quality possible and how they tried, with the help of Kobo of course, to transfer the atmosphere of the manga to the anime more effectively. And Kobo also mentioned how the idea of the final arc had been in his mind for years and specifically the idea of a major battle involving multiple parties. And Kobo wanted to show the scale of the conflict and how it affects the world of Bleach, and he aimed to add more complexity to several characters to show that they are not just fighting but also have emotions that drive them to make critical decisions through their internal struggles. And this was guys a general discussion about the Quincy arc and Kubo's ideas around it. And regarding the third part guys, Kubo confirmed throughout the interview that one of the key characters who will have a significant role in the upcoming parts is Yuryu. Kubo said that he couldn't reveal everything but Yuryu would have a major role in this arc and that in the last trailer he had hidden several surprises from us. He also mentioned that some characters who were not focused on much in the previous arcs will have important roles in this one. And Kobo said that fans should pay attention to characters who haven't appeared much as there will be surprises related to them. He wanted to give these characters more depth in this arc. Kobo didn't stop there. He also said that the rest of the arc would feature developments, surprises and betrayals. And they will also talk about how Shunsui's voice actor did a great job in portraying the scenes where Shunsui unleashes his Bankai and that the performance was truly amazing. And so this is guys the most important content from that radio episode. Personally, most of what Kobo said I had already predicted and talked about it in many of my videos. I mentioned that the way they presented the trailer this time was different from the previous ones, as it seems they are trying to hide uh, several things that will surprise everyone. And the main reason for this, in my opinion, is related to the number of new additions that will be in this part. As they said in this episode, this part will be a mix of manga events and original events created by Kobo in collaboration with the studio. And this is the most important point in the discussion. Kobo confirmed that Yuryu would play a strong role in this arc. He had previously mentioned that there was, or actually there is, a complex plot around how Yuryu survived the Ausverm, and I believe this part will mark the true beginning of revealing Yuryu's secrets, alongside potentially unveiling the character of Ryukin as well. Don't forget guys that Kobo said we should pay attention to the characters who didn't get much focus in the previous arcs, and one of those characters is surely Yuryu's father, Ryukin. It's hard to believe that Kobo wasn't referring referring to Ryuken when he talked about characters who were neglected in the previous arcs. Because Ryuken Ishida is the son of Sokin who had a mysterious history with the Vandarai and Ryuken worked hard on the theory his father spoke of regarding the Silver Arrow. Ryuken also the father of Yuryu, the only survivor of the Auswell. He also had connections to Masaki in Ishin. So with all these huge connections, isn't enough to shine a light on him and uncover some of his secrets? Therefore guys, it's very likely that Ryukun will be one of the characters Kobo focuses on and Ishin Shiva may also be one of these characters, given that his appearance is often tied to Ryukun. However guys, I believe Ishin's role will be likely in the fourth part, as that will feature the final battle between Ichigo and Yuabach. Another thing guys that intrigued me in Kobo's statements was his talk about alliances, betrayals and unexpected developments. 
I find this very interesting guys, if he refers even to manga readers. Because as manga readers we know that in the manga events of the third part, several alliances occurred that were previously unthinkable such as the alliance between the Arankars and the Shinigami, Gorimiju and Nel coming from Wikomondo to help Ichigo and his friends, and also Basby, Lil Ticho, Giselle declaring their defections from Yuhabach after he gave up on them, which could be considered as a betrayal, as well as their new alliance with the Shinigami, and we have also Yuryu's betrayal of Yuhabach, which was somewhat expected and known by everyone. Then there is also Hatchfeld, I'm not sure if we can call it a betrayal, but Hajfeld passed a vision to Yuabach in the form of a dream, which made Yuabach dismiss it. So if Kubu is referring to this, then this might be surprises for anime viewers only. But if he's talking about new betrayals, whoa, that would be something entirely new and would truly surprise everyone. And also there is something else, when you hear Kubo talk about the Quincy arc, I mean Thousand Year Blood War arc, it sounds as if he's talking about another arc. The events in the manga were incredibly fast paced, so I think he added many things that he couldn't do in the manga. Now the anime has given him a great chance, I call it golden chance, to rewrite the events of that arc. And now guys, let's talk about the second topic that I want to discuss with you, which is the Hell Arc. Every Bleach fan wants this arc and wants Kobo to return to the manga. And as a Bleach fan, I would love to experience reading new chapters of the manga again and relieve the memories of reading Bleach with new events. And Kubo actually gave us this hope with the release of the one shot in 2021, which hinted a continuation based on what we have seen in that one shot. And I have personally been thinking about this arc and posting videos about my prediction for it. Now, almost three years have passed. And I still have the same enthusiasm and desire to see Bleach again as a manga. But recently, I've started asking myself this question. Will Kubo really return to drawing the manga based on what he presented in that one shot? Logically speaking guys, there has been no official announcement from Shonen Jump indicating a continuation of that one shot. It was just a one shot, I don't know about any other news that said that there is a sequel or something like that. So, but even though as I said, the events and how Kubo built the story in that one shot suggest that there should be a continuation. And a year or more ago, Kubo was directly asked about will you continue the story from the one shot? His answer was something like, I don't want pressure, I'll draw it when people stop asking me about it. And I understand Kubo's point of view, but at the same time, I also understand the fans perspective as I am one of them. Those who ask about that arc do so out of love for Bleach. It's worth Kubo's creativity. They would be happy to see Kubo return to the manga, of course in a way that satisfies him without the weekly pressure he suffered from during the Bleach run in Shonen Jump. But now guys, with no official confirmation of Kubo's return, it's natural to wonder if there really will be a continuation, especially since we're now approaching the end of the anime which is getting closer to adapting the Quincy arc or Thousand Year Blood War arc and also called the final arc. And according to the translation of the radio episode that I have, Bobo mentioned how it is indeed the final arc and how he had ideas and wanted to give a proper conclusion to some characters, etc. And this made me think, is Kobo really planning to continue the story but wants to fix the Quincy arc and the anime first and then move on to another part of the manga which would be the hell world or is there something else? Because I find it intriguing when he answers questions about characters from that one shot. Like the last one, Shikai of Yayahara, which was supposed in my opinion to be revealed in a new manga chapter. He simply answered them in the club outside. Of course guys, there are many questions he avoided answering, saying that there are secrets and that he might throw them someday. But really, all his answers are vague, ranging from it's a secret to someday, which is why I'm waiting to see what happens after the anime ends. 
Will the end of the anime be Bleach's final conclusion? Or will the anime be just a gateway for Kobo to return to draw in the manga again? So in conclusion guys, what I'm trying to say is that we don't have any official news about a continuation. All we have is hope that Kobo is already working on that art. And just like he surprised us with the new one shot, he will surprise us again by releasing new chapters. In the end guys, what do you think about what Kobo said in that ready episode? Tell me guys your opinions and see you in my next video.